to utilize in the mirror match, that is the Leon, allowing you to just sneak in an extra 30 damage and maybe take a surprise KO that your opponent wasn't expecting to see happen. Yeah, that is, that is definitely huge there for sure. Also, I do see uh, a Crobat B as well yep. uh, in the list for Gustavo. So that is going to maybe come into play as well. Maybe not actually in this matchup because, of course, I don't know, it's going to be interesting because origin form of Palkia always comes down to, okay, how many Pokemon right. are being benched on both sides? So at, at the same time, you want to bench Pokemon because it does more damage for you, but you're also giving more damage to your opponent. So that is going to be very interesting interesting to see how these players deal with that, how they play around that, or what their strategy is, how they uh, deal with their hands going into this, and uh, this is going to be a tough one. It is everything on the line at this point. Win, and you are in top eight of the biggest tournament of the season, and if you lose, you're just going to walk home, and you'll feel pretty solid with a top 32 finish, but you'll be left wondering what could have been if I had just played this one turn a little bit differently. If I had just drawn slightly better, maybe it would be me in top eight of this tournament. We'll see which one of these players comes out victorious. All right, let's check out these prize cards. Chip, do you see anything that is scary in there for you? Yeah, that one cross switcher from Gustavo could be a little sketchy. You do need to play two copies of that card at the same time in order to get value out of it. So when you have one in the prizes, that means that you're not going to be able to utilize the second pair until you fetch it out. And the handshake has been extended. Let's get to the table. Round 15, and it looks like Gustavo is going first. Round 15 of the winning in at that. We got to feature a winning in yesterday, and it was equally as tense uh, as today is probably going to be as well. So I'm really excited to get into this. There's so much on the line for both of these players, and we are starting off here with Gustavo. Searching through the deck here, checking those prize cards off of the Capacious Bucket, and then grabbing those two water energy that are going to be able to go to hand from that Capacious Bucket too. But as we always see at the beginning of these turns, you definitely want to check through your deck, make sure you know exactly what is in your prize cards, what you have to work around in order to formulate your strategy for this matchup. Luckily, I'm sure, I guarantee you, both of these players here today have run so many matches of the mirror. So I'm definitely. sure that there are cards tacked into both of their decks that will help them in that scenario. Concealed Cards gets two more to hand for Gustavo. Something we definitely want to remember to make note of as well. Gustavo actually played on the stream in round one yesterday morning where he took the loss. So he started this tournament 0 and 1 and since then has won 11 out of 13 games, which is absolutely incredible and not at all easy to do. Yeah, especially under the mental pressure of taking a loss. You know, right. so many players can feel defeated by that, and it might throw off their game a little bit. But Gustavo, obviously not at all being uh, hindered by that. I'm sure very comfortable in his play, comfortable in his deck choice. And sometimes you hit a bad matchup, and you have to take, take the L, but you can really rescue it from there. And Gustavo is a huge uh, proponent of that. This turn is setting up pretty nicely for Gustavo. He'll go ahead and pass it to Nick. Gustavo did get down two Sobbles and an energy card on to the Origin Form Palkia. So he is very much in the driver's seat and prepped to take the first KO on the next turn. Yeah, absolutely. Very solid start here. Nick starting off with a level ball, searching for a Pokemon 90 HP or less. So eyeing down that Sobble there, obviously uh, also searches out Drizziles as well, but you don't want to go into a Drizzile if you don't have a Sobble to evolve it off of. So we are probably going to see that Sobble come down off of the level ball here. Not really, I mean, you want to save your level balls usually for those Drizziles sometimes, but if you have no other choice, sometimes you have to do what you have to do for well, that's this the great thing. That, that's the great thing about level ball in this deck because it is an out to Drizzile and it's also an out to Sobble. So it's set up on the first turn to find basic Pokemon and throughout the rest of the game, it's an option to just get Drizzile 
Getting a level ball in your hand means you can get Drizzile, and getting Drizzile means you can get any trainer card from your deck with Shady Dealings. Yeah, you have options here. Exactly. So you have outs to this uh, very important first turn setup. As we said before, sometimes this matchup can really come down to who's going first and what that first turn setup looks like. And having such a strong setup on Gustavo's side is uh, potentially kind of scary for Nick to have to match that momentum as well into a good setup on his side too. Now we do have the option for a supporter here from Nick because he is going second, but I don't see many supporters in hand, at least from what I am seeing, that are applicable for this turn one. Yeah, I don't actually see a supporter that's playable at all. No, no, no Irida or anything like yeah. that, which I'm sure is what Nick would have ideally liked to open up with. Yeah, unfortunate. There, there are three supporters, but none of them are really applicable at all for this turn. That Irida being so, so crucial in many of these matchups for the Origin form Palkia players. Uh, kind of a controversial card, but now being played in some of the top player players' decks at this uh, championship here. So I think earning the respect of, I'm sure, a lot of people out there now because we have seen it perform again and again, both early game and late game for so many clutch moments, uh, clutch searches, evolution Pokemon, the item card you might need the cross switcher plays it has been incredibly strong in a lot of these matchups so quick ball will discard the roxanne that's a tough card to see hit the discard pile especially in a match where you are going second because in those games that you're going second that's usually when you're most likely going to be able to use roxanne you'll be behind your opponent will be the aggressor they'll take the prize cards first and you'll have that response with the Roxanne, try to slow them down, put them at just two cards. If Nick wants to utilize this card, he'll have to find Palpad now. Yeah, that is an extremely rough quick ball discard uh, for sure, because especially if you are sort of on the back foot, you may be able to uh, gain that advantage in the later game, potentially, if you have that Roxanne sort of stunting your opponent's hand toward the later game when you are down in those prize cards. But if we are not able to see that, oh, Nick just having to pass wow. here, Chip. Doesn't even have an energy that attached is... to the Palkia. Oh my goodness, and first Gustavo here, just exactly what you want to see. Oh wow, choosing to Marnie here for Gustavo. I'm sure a, uh, a hard decision to make there because Nick didn't really seem to have much in hand. Right. For uh, for his turn there, but Gustavo is going to choose Samarni after evolving into that origin form Palkia V Star and attaching that energy for turn. Yeah, I always hate playing a Marnie when I know my opponent did literally nothing, especially on a, their first turn when they're able to play a supporter card. So. I'm sure it's not the optimal supporter Gustavo would have liked to have played, but it's what he had available. It's what he had to go with. And he wants to make sure, hey, even though I don't want to give my opponent a new hand, I am still very much ahead here. And I don't want to play to not lose. I need to play to win the game. I'm not worried about what Absolutely. my opponent has. If I'm the aggressor, if I'm taking knockouts, I want to make sure my board is getting more set up. And sometimes that aggressive play is something you really need going into a matchup like this. Uh, because you can kind of throw your opponent off guard here, take take that uh, confidence into this this game, and just outplay, outperform, uh, out. I don't know, just out. Right. Yeah. Out. Yeah. I'll play your opponents there. So overpower your opponents. Absolutely. Definitely. And that's exactly what Gustavo's doing here. By just taking, taking the first prize. That first prize card, especially on a Pokemon that is so important and very difficult to lose here for Nick. That Radiant Greninja, which is sort of an out to these terrible hands that might be uh, in the future for him potentially. So losing that uh, card draw is very detrimental so far. And just evolving into an origin form Palkia V-Star. I'm not even sure what is in hand here, but this is looking very, very grim. Nick does have an energy, and he's going to have to use Star Portal for just one wow. energy. That is such a weak use of that powerful ability that you only get once per game. He does launch the First attack off into an opposing Pokemon V-Star, but he has no Pokemon on the bench, Boo. That does help in a little bit of a way because there is no damage modifier for well, your sure. opponent, but 
Obviously, there's also no sobbles. Exactly. <laughs> you have nothing for right. your recovery, for your uh, your back end of the turn. But uh, yeah, Nick did get that first swing onto that origin form Palkia V-Star, which in a mirror match, that is pretty crucial. You always want the first swing um, on a Pokemon that it has the same HP as you, because then you are dwindling down that HP first. But unfortunately for Nick, Gustavo just has a much better board state here, a much better, uh, more stable setup. We see a Sable, two Drizziles, ready to evolve into potential Inteleons as well. The Radiant Greninja still in play for Gustavo. So there's just so much potential for him here to just play into exactly what he needs and continue to overpower Nick in this matchup. And speaking of Radiant Greninja, Gustavo has not used that concealed cards yet this turn and does get a couple of water energies out of the deck right now with that powerful Capacious Bucket. Benching down an origin form Palkia V and attaching the energy there. So full bench now here for Gustavo. And he's not used concealed cards yet and is actually going to hold off. I think he wants to make sure he has an attachment next turn potentially or just doesn't really need anything else. He's sitting on a couple cross switchers in hand actually, which is really powerful. And Nick on the other side, what is in this hand? Not enough to win the game. And wow. Nick is just going to concede. All right, yeah, Nick scooping it up there. There was an origin form Palkia in hand, but just choosing not to bench it, I'm sure, just because it was sort of a liability there. But what else do you have? There's nothing else in the setup there. Unfortunately right. for Nick, just a very, very uh, unfortunate starting hand, starting setup here. Exactly what we were talking about, fearing, uh, I'm sure, both players fear to see in this matchup. You need to start out bold, confident, strong, and that was just unfortunately not what happened there for Nick. So Nick did opt to go first in this next game here, and there's still, I mean, there's everything on the line here, but Nick is still very much in it, Chip. I don't know if you got to look at either of these players' deck lists, but are there any cards that stand out to you in either of these lists that might take a slight advantage on the other? Yeah, well, we mentioned the Leon and Nick Flores' list, and Gustavo is actually also packing a copy of Leon, another way to just boost the damage. Gustavo is also playing the one copy of Rare Candy, starting to become a much more popular inclusion in these decks to just get into shady dealings and telling in a lot quicker and use Aqua Bullet as early as turn two. So interestingly enough as well, I think I saw Nick have a Cheryl in hand yep, yep. on his end as well. So we could see some potential healing. I'm sure that is definitely a card that was slotted for the mirror match potentially as well. Because, Ooh, oh, lots two of gold cross there. switchers over on Gustavo's side and a Shady oh, wow. Dealings Intellion for Nick. A lot of ball search cards too. Two level balls and a quick ball. Not the best looking prize cards, to be honest, for, for either of these two players. Well, what's interesting, though, is uh, we actually saw the double cross switcher prize for Isaiah Bradner in last matchup, too. I don't know if you got to see that, but when he played the Hisuian Heavy Ball, he reorganized his prize cards and put both of the cross switchers at the bottom and then drew them both into <laughs> a hand uh, the next turn. So uh, that who knows? That is certainly very lucky. <laughs> yes, Gustavo does play that Hisuian Heavy Ball, so who knows? We could see a repeat of that potentially as well. So we did see Nick's starting turn much better than before. That origin form Palkia V on the board state now with the energy attached, Sable inactive and a Sable on bench. So I'm sure Nick is feeling a lot more confident in this setup, especially having gone first now and potentially being able to uh, take that, that slight edge over Gustavo. And this is a great start for Gustavo when you're going second. Could use the Battle VIP Pass off the Irida, but is actually thinking better of it. He does have a quick ball in hand, and I don't think he has any energy. So taking Capacious Bucket does make sense. Yeah, so I'm wondering, Chip, how do you think both of these players are going to play with their benches? Do you think they both just go for the fill up, go for uh, trying to optimize their draw engine, their search outs, and just trying to outplay their opponent in this matchup? I think you really have to. You've got to just kind of push the envelope. You can try to play with like four benched Pokemon and hope that your opponent doesn't have a way to really boost the damage that much more. But we know both of these players have the damage modifiers through things like Leon, also Quick Shooting Intellion being another different option. 
But if you can maybe play through the game with just four Pokemon on your bench, that is going to be not too bad. Yeah, definitely. I think what uh, we're going to possibly see is just who can maintain the momentum in this game and the resources as well um, to just outlast their opponents as well. I think I think the uh, the swings and the gust options that we might see are going to come into play very big in this matchup. Top deck for turn over on Nick's side. Looks like that Starmy V. Not the best card in this matchup. It's really great against Arceus decks. So I think we will probably just see it hit the discard pile off of this Professor's Research for Absolutely. seven. Absolutely. So, yep, we are over to Nick now. We did see the scoop up there on the active Sobble and just benched right back down. And then the research into a fresh seven again with these supporter cards in the hand for Nick. I think that's the same three supporters he yes. had in hand in game number one. The Cheryl, the boss, and Roxanne. Super powerful in the mid to late game, but really weak when you're trying to get set up. Especially if you oh, already just played a supporter. And actually, Nick has missed an energy attachment this turn. He was at a huge advantage because he was going first. He was going to get the first attack and the first knockout, but now needs to use Capacious Bucket to get the attachment. So he can get Shady Dealings and Tellian out of the deck, or Drizzile, excuse me, still get the bucket, still get the energy cards, and as long as there's a Palkia in hand, which I do think there is one hiding, he should still be fine. Yeah, we had to see in the last game here, Nick had to use that's the uh, V-Star power ability just for one energy. Yeah. That hurts. That is less than ideal, to say the least. Absolutely. So Nick here just shuffling through the deck, looking through, seeing what all of his options are. And using that capacious bucket here now for those two water energies and just searching through, making sure he knows all of his outs and all the important cards that are in the prize cards and in the deck as well. Getting at least one water energy, I would imagine, yep, will grab the second one as well. His own path to the peak being in play means he can't use something like the Radiant Greninja here or even a Star Portal. So it's slowing him down, but if it sticks around, Gustavo did miss an energy drop on a Palkia, chose to go with the attachment to Sobble and use Keep Calling. So that means that if Gustavo is unable to play a Melanie or bump this stadium, he uh, you know, needs one of those pieces in order to even pull off an attack this coming turn. Absolutely. So we do see the evolution into the origin form Palkia. The first prize. To take that knockout, that first prize on the active Sobble that Gustavo had that energy attached to. So now the energy is in the discard for Gustavo. At least one there from what I have seen. And now we are passed over back to Gustavo from the top deck here. I love that Gustavo plays those shiny Drizziles too. <laughs> Both of these players have very uh, shiny decks. They do indeed, enjoying the bling here. Gustavo does have Training Court in hand, which he will put into play. And there is an Origin Form Palkia V-Star. He's also holding on to a copy of Raihan. He's got some powerful cards, but maybe he wants to see what else the deck has to offer with a Crobat first. Here we go. That one copy of Crobat V to draw up to six cards in the hand now. Does get a level ball off of that, so that is really nice. Can get a second copy of Drizzile. He is holding on to one in the hand. That's very important to searching out those trainer cards that you need to really play into your strategy. What do you think is a good strategy here for Gustavo as far as the rest of these turns might play out, Chip? Well, I think he definitely wants an attachment to the Palkia here through a supporter card, either the Raihan, which we see in the hand, or maybe just a Melanie. And this feels like a decent turn to go for Melanie because you can just increase your hand size a little bit, try to find more pieces for future turns, and at the same time, get that extra energy you need. And you still stay, save your Star Portal V-Star power for a future turn. Yeah, not only that, but Raihan uh, only being activated when something is, is knocked out, which was activated this turn, but still, it's so good in the late game when you maybe just need one card that's going to win you the game uh, that we've seen so many times. So that is... R very good uh, to save sometimes Ooh. so you can get that one search. Actually, something else Gustavo could go for here, and yeah, he is going to do it, oh. is get the Marnie, shuffle Nick's hand to the bottom of the deck, and then if he can get enough energy in the discard pile and move this Drizzile out of the active spot, 
he can use Moonlight Shuriken on the Radiant Greninja in order to KO both the Drizzile and the Sobble over on Nick's side. Oh, if we see that chip, I'm going to flip my lid, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be very intense. Uh, and let's see if it plays out here for Gustavo. He chose not to play the scoop of net he had in hand previous to the Marnie. Okay. But maybe, so maybe he's not quite going for that play. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Capacious Bucket is a good start. He did get that Greninja down, so he can use concealed cards here to just continue to get a little bit more card advantage over Nick, who is just sitting on four off the Marnie right now. Absolutely. And I did see another scoop up net in hand as well for Gustavo off of that Marnie. Using that concealed cards ability to draw into another two cards. We do see the scoop up net here now, Chip. Oh, it's Greninja time. It is Greninja time. Oh no, I'm sure Nick is now very scared looking at the potential of this. Wow, what a turn. Power play here. V-Star Marker flipped over Star Portal. Three energies to the active, and Gustavo has the attachment to Apalkia on the bench. Moonlight Shuriken dealing 90 damage to two Pokemon, which will be that Sobble and Drizzile on the bench almost definitely. Absolutely detrimental if it plays out like that, which is looking like, like it is going to for Nick. I am sure that is a very scary sight to see, shutting down all potential of draw engines. And then Nick's board state is going to look exactly how it did in the last game, Chip. Yeah, just a Palkia against the world, hoping to get a top deck. What does he have off these four cards? Oh no, it's it's not much. There's an energy, a Palkia V-Star. He at least has a boss's orders maybe to work with, but oh. this is not good. Gustavo takes two prizes. And now Nick is left with a lone Palkia in play. What is this top deck? Almost the most into, to, important two prizes there. Nick top decking that Irida. Okay, that is a decent little bailout. Can get a Sobble down to try and start establishing something else. And at minimum, Nick will knock out this Greninja, which will pri uh, tie up the prize trade. And Gustavo using that star uh, V-Star power ability already, so it has been flipped. So those energies are not able to be retrieved, at least with that. We still do have supporters, as we saw the Melanie, uh, as well as the Raihan. So there are still options here for Gustavo. But that was an extremely important play there. And we, it, we'll see how the rest of this plays out. Getting two prize cards off two one prize Pokemon. Let's Such see a great what, start. what the two cards are Nick will grab. He doesn't have any energies in the discard pile right now to utilize off of the Irida, or sorry, off of the training court. So maybe Irida can find him a way to get the energy to draw cards with concealed cards because it seems like he's eyeing up Greninja. Uh, I'm gonna use this card. Okay. And also a level ball, the other grab here, maybe saving that for a future point in time or wants to concealed cards before playing the level ball because he really just wants to draw into Sobbles. And here we go, seeing that Radiant Greninja hit the bench here for Nick, discarding that card to draw two more cards. Let's see what those are. A Melanie, and it looks like another a Drizzile straight to the hand as well. So now level ball and a Drizzile already. So we might actually be seeing the level ball for a Sobble here for Nick to uh, line up future turns. It looks like he is going to grab that, put it to the top, and do a quick deck search here as well. Sabo coming down straight onto the bench for Nick. An important follow-up here, since both that Sabo and Drizzle were wiped out last turn from that very powerful Radiant Greninja play. But now Nick has a Radiant Greninja of his own and still has not activated his V-Star uh, ability either. That's right, has not used his own star portal, so that is a play he is saving for later. Can maybe attack with his own Radiant yes. Greninja to take a couple of prizes onto some small HP Pokemon. Or maybe if he has to two-hit KO and Origin Form Palkia, he can set that up with Greninja as well. So here we go. We see the knockout there on the Radiant Greninja for Nick Flores grabbing another prize card out. And then we are back onto Gustavo's side of the board here, evolving into that Drizzile, activating that Shady Dealings ability to search out one trainer card from the deck, going for the Choice Belt. 
You can only get one trainer card, yeah. <laughs> that is a Drizzile, not an Intellian just yet, I think. Uh, uh, Gustavo. Thinking ahead there. He, he, knew what he, <laughs> he knew what he wanted to do, and he's getting the okay. double ma damage modifier right now. With six Pokemon in play, he's dealing 180 damage, plus another 60 from the Choice Belt. And this Leon, if he has a Sobble to put in play, that's going to boost it up to there we 260 go. damage. Maybe if he has the Echoing Horn, oh he can pull another goodness. Pokemon out of the discard pile, throwing the Starmie onto the bench. Oh. And this is a huge turn for Gustavo, getting the double damage modifier, dealing exactly oh. 280 damage. <laughs> Absolutely huge play here. Beautifully executed by Gustavo. This, this is the moments we look for, Chip, in these matchups, wow. these beautiful plays. Out of nowhere, Gustavo has a two to four prize lead, and Nick Incredible. Flores is left with a Starmie V in play. It's only going to hit wow. for 100 damage with Energy Spiral. Now it is Starmie V against the world here, Chip. Unfortunately for Nick, I'm sure this is pretty devastating to have to deal with. Nick is just up against it's an uphill battle right now for Nick, having his entire draw engine be wiped one turn and now having his only attacker that had energy attached to it be wiped out in the following turn. It has just been absolutely brutal in these back-to-back -back turns uh, that Gustavo has been executing beautifully. Yeah, Gustavo has pulled very far ahead here. It is going to be really tough for Nick to find a path back into this one, but... A decent start could be something like the Roxanne, which we know Absolutely. he plays. And I think I did see it there in the deck. Yep, sure enough, grabbed off of that shady dealings. But is Roxanne going to be enough? In addition to this Roxanne, Nick needs to establish something to attack with. I'm sure Gustavo expected that as well. As soon as you get into that uh, three prize cards or less territory, it's something that you have to be prepared for, especially in a mirror match here, because it is a, a very important card in the late game, especially when you are, are, are on the back foot, just as Nick is right now. But I'm sure Gustavo still probably feels pretty comfortable in this setup because he has just performed these turns so well and put him into a very comfortable position in this matchup so far. Oh, and Gustavo's not even going to... Oh, takes a little peek there, wants to see what he has access to. Gustavo's easy win condition is just knocking out this Starmie. He's got two cards left. He shows his opponent. He's got the Drizzile, and there's nothing that Nick can do about it. As long as there's a boss's orders available, he knows. he'll be able to pick up the boss, KO the Starmie. Nick's going to do everything he can, though. This Still is the win-and-in matchup, That's Chip, right. so we have to play this out. Nick wants pass. to give his best performance here, but Gustavo here is the pass. needs the boss. Gustavo for the Drizzile. Shady dealings for the boss's orders. And there There's it the game. is. Boss's orders bringing up either two prize Pokemon and Gustavo Wada with a convincing 2-0 victory to make top eight at the North American International Championships. Yeah, you can see the relief there on Gustavo's face. Both of these players playing for